This is Q on CBC Radio 1 across Canada, Sirius 137 across North America, and on bold television. With the Junos in St. John's this year, the annual celebration of Canadian music has come full circle in a sense. That's because even though the Jun Junos have been handed out since 1970, the ceremony got into a bit of a rut after its first 30 years or so, only ever taking place in or around Toronto or Vancouver. When the show finally did hit the road and go from city to city each year, eight years ago, St. John's was the first destination. And what band was chosen to open the first St. John's Juno Awards show? It was Great Big C, of course. And Eight years on, the roots rockers from The Rock remain one of this province's finest musical exports. From the, from the bars of George Street to the whole wide world, Great Big C have covered a lot of musical ground in their nearly two-decade-long career, but they've never strayed far from this island in their sound or in their souls. A little bit later in the show, in a few minutes, Sean McCann of Great Big C is going to join me and perform from his new solo disc. But first, let me introduce another Great Big C founding member, one who recently took a turn in front of the movie camera instead of the microphone. Joining me on stage at the Reed Theatre, please welcome Alan Doyle. anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Alan has come on stage, let me just explain to the people listening across the country, with a muffin with three stir sticks in it. Yeah, man. Which I could, I could light. Don't say we don't take you to the nicest places, man. <laughs> tell you right now. Thank you very much, sir. I'm going to put that right here. And, uh, it's no whaleboat tour, but it's, I mean, it's a start, isn't it? <laughs> hey, it's good to see you, man. Oh, nice to be here. Well, uh, it's uh, it's nice to be in this room. The last, I think the last time I was in this room, uh, we did a 24-hour musical uh, with, uh, with Jill Carley, uh, who was an artistic fraud, a fundraiser. And, you know, they do this crazy thing where they get together on Friday night and pick a musical out of a hat, and you got to do it on Saturday night at 8 o'clock. Choreography, <laughs> dancing, the whole works, singing. And I, if I remember correctly, I played Danny in Greece, right exactly where I'm sitting. Really? You played Danny in Greece? Yeah. Rocked it, too. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Give us a little bit. I, 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 I won't sing, but I'll do the dance for you. <laughs> I, I actually remember the, the piece of choreography from Greece Lightning. It's silly. You, you really don't look like Danny from Greece. I know. You've got, uh, and you're currently yeah. uh, sporting the, uh, either the playoff beard yeah. or the indie beard or yeah. the Robin Hood beard. <laughs> yeah. One of the three, which yeah. I'm going to get into so for a second. Let me ask you the obligatory question off the top. Uh, this is your home province. The Junos were here about eight years ago. I just talked about you being the first performers on it. Uh, wh what does it mean to you to have the Junos back here in St. John's? Oh, I, I, I thought it was great when they started traveling in the first place, and, and not just coming here, but going around the country, because you know it becomes a bigger celebration when it comes to the smaller places, I always thought, you know, and... You know, as much as I enjoy my times in Toronto and, and in Vancouver, and, you know, sometimes the Junos gets lost in those cities. You know, it's not as important. And you come to, you know, you come to St. John's and a few other cities of that size, it really makes a difference. Plus, when it's home and, and you know, the best music is here, so you might as well. <laughs> it's good to have it here. And we are, like, I always th say this, Scott, like, you know, we're pretty good at music and singing songs and dancing, that, but we're fantastic hosts. Yes, you are. We're brilliant. That's yes, that. you are. <laughs> so listen, let's get into this. Let's get into this uh, latest gig you've got because yeah. this is. Uh, we were talking a bit about this last night, and 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 what a remarkable journey this is for you. You're, uh, <laughs> you're about to be. Uh, you're you're one of the stars in in what is going to be probably the biggest movie of the year, and and certainly one of the biggest budget movies ever made, right? Uh, and uh, so you're playing Alan, how do I say your last name? Alan Adale. Alan D Adale mm. in Ridley Scott's new Robin Hood movie. The movie is opening at the Cannes Film Festival in May. You're going. You're sharing screen time with Kate Blanchett, Scott Grimes, and your old buddy Russell Crowe. So uh, tell us a bit about how you landed this gig. Uh, well, I suppose I should I'll very quickly tell you how I met Russell first, because that's kind of proud sure. of it. I mean, uh, Russell first discovered Great Big Sea uh, when he was in Canada, I think in the late 90s, doing a movie called Mystery Alaska. And uh, Kevin Durand and Scott Grimes, two of the guys who ended up being in Robin Hood as well, were in that film, and they introduced him to Great Big C. And I heard a rumor through the early 90s, you know the dude, like the gladiator dude, like he, he likes your band. <laughs> I was like, right. really? And as good Canadian form would have it, uh, I was at the uh, NHL Hockey Awards in Toronto in I think 2004, 
And uh, I gave out a trophy, and later on in the show, while I was out sat next to somebody in the audience, they announced, and uh, now to present the whatever trophy it was, Russell Crowe, and I was like, I gotta go meet, Ru I gotta go find out if this is true. So I went backstage and said hello, and that's where we first met, and then the, our band uh, played the Molson Abbey Theater a little while later. We got together, we ended up writing songs together, went to Australia, did a record with his band. He wrote a few songs for the Great Big C Records. Anyway, we've become friends. Yes. He called me about two years ago and said, hey Al, how's it going? Hey man, good day mate, whatever, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and, uh, and said, can you play the lute? <laughs> and I was like, I, you know, what, what kind of, you know, a medieval lute? Yeah, I think so. Like, Probably like you said, not, what kind of loot? Well, yeah, there are more kinds of <laughs> right. loot. But right. do you know how to play? I've become I've become a bit of a loot nerd. Right, you you were worried that it would be a kind you can't play. As opposed yeah. To the, yeah, well, it's true. I mean, there are like the new Renaissance. The new the newer the loots get, the bigger they get, and the more complicated they get. But right. Renaissance loots are are kind of difficult. Uh, and but thankfully, medieval loots are, are a bit less difficult and a little more. They're basically bazookies. Like, and we play bazooki all the time in in, uh, in Great Big Sea. So. Uh, Anyway, I said, why do you ask? And uh, he said, well, would you be interested in coming to LA to read for a film role? Because we need a musician yeah. for this project we're doing. And I asked him what it was. And he told me they were doing Robert Hood and he wanted someone to play Alan and Dale. And I was like, come on, man, I was born for that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I so, went. So uh, you didn't flinch. You're like, no, I'm, you know, you didn't think like that for a moment, I've never done acting before or something, because you haven't, right? Or have you? Not really, no. no but yeah. I, I, now that you mention it, I probably should have been more <laughs> no, that cautious about it. Well. No, but this is well. This is the Alan Doyle we know and love. You're <laughs> you're like I'm doing it. I'm going. Sure. So then, so then you get cast yeah. in this film. That, yeah. Did it ever sink in that you're? At what point did it sink in that you're actually now acting in a film with Russell Crowe and Kate Blanchett? Yeah. In a day one, way? really, when <laughs> when we went. I mean, I did all the prep stuff, you know, and that was really fun. Like we'd, it was sort of like a Merry Man boot camp that we all went to. <laughs> I'm serious. We, we went to Russell's farm in Australia, <laughs> and uh, for three weeks, we all did this training regiment of you know horse riding and archery and sword fighting and fitness and all this kind of stuff. Wow. And uh, so that, you know, that, I just found that kind of fun. That was just like a great laugh, you know? And then uh, went over to London a couple of times to get costumes fitted, and that was kind of cool, you know? I was like, wow, that's a great laugh. And then I ran back, and believe it or not, it was at the Junos in Vancouver last year, and we played the last song at the Junos last year, and I ran from the stage, got on a red eye, and I was on the set the next day, in, and I walked, put on my costume, and walked on set, and had to say a line uh, in the first scene I was in, and uh, I won't tell you what the line was, because I might wreck the movie or something. Yeah, uh, wouldn't want to let but go of a line. You know the, you know the dude in, uh, in, on The Simpsons, who goes, would you like fries with that? <laughs> that guy? Yeah. That's what my voice sounded like <laughs> when I said the line. I could just see the doubt yeah. <laughs> in hundreds of people's eyes. But it, no, it, it, that kind of sinks in really quick, you know, and then you're on it, you're in it, and you're doing it, and off you go. And for six months, you were in the UK yeah. shooting this film, right? Yeah. Wow. And so, and you moved your family there. Mm. You guys were living there for yeah. six months. Now, uh, you've seen the film, right? Yep. You just came back from LA where you saw the film for the first time in its entirety, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. How, how did it feel to see yourself on the big screen? It's fantastic. <laughs> it's amazing. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> I should be bigger. No, the... Uh, right. Uh, there are other people in the film, right? Is, there's... Kind of... Periphery characters. Yeah, like, like Russell you know, Crowe. Yeah. Supp support staff, I call them. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, God. Um, the film is amazing. It's amazing. And, um, I mean, I'll, I'll just go see it and you'll judge it for yourself. But it's, it's, it's a wonderful, action-packed, you know, historical movie where that they tell me is, is an old style way of making that kind of movie. I mean, there's almost no CGI or special effects in it, you know, and there's, we did scenes with 800 horses running up and down the beach and dudes getting their, literally getting their eyes knocked out with the top of spears. The whole work's like. Right. Literally getting their literally eyes. Literally, a guy got his eye knocked out in one of the scenes. Wow. Yep, and I was about 10 feet from him. And you know something else? I was in a scene where they kept a dude on fire. <laughs> and. Maybe it's a, a trick, you know, if you're a novice actor and they don't want, you know. So the scene starts and some dude who I'd been talking to 30 seconds before someone said action comes running past me, set completely ablaze. <laughs> You'd figure that'd be the kind of thing someone would give you a heads up about. <laughs> uh, so when the take was over, 
Ridley came over and said, that's great. Look, you should look, uh, you should look you know, terrified by that stuff. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, OK. I'll, all right, thank I'll you. I'll work on terrifying. That's great acting, by me, ace acting there. Like, and, and but so seeing yourself though in yeah. this, do you did you think are you happy with your performance? Yeah, I'm happy enough. I mean, it's a little hard for me do to. Do you feel judge. like there's more Hollywood in your future? <laughs> I, I mean, I'd love to do stuff. That Maybe was, there's more loot playing roles. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, how big a market is that? I mean, how many? <laughs> I don't know. You know, you could branch yeah. out. You know, yeah. the mandolin. Sure. Is, but it's fantastic. I mean, so uh, so you're excited about this. Oh, I'm really excited, and I'm uh, having seen. I can finally talk about the movie because I saw it a couple of days ago. And up until then, people have been asking me about it, and I sound like I'm being coy or whatever. I go like, so is your role very big? Or is the scene, what's it like? And I go, guys, I don't know. Like, I haven't seen it yet. Like, you know, the, we were there for six months, and, and, and stuff happened while they filmed stuff other than me, for some reason. And, <laughs> and, 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 but it's amazing, and it's a real thrill ride. And I mean, the coolest thing about it, to be honest, it was to be a part of such a massive art movement. I mean, and it sounds a little weird to say that probably, but you know, to be in, in a place where there are great actors and great writers and to watch their skill set work. But then the, behind that guy, there's an excellent guy. The best guys in the world worked on this movie. So, and the film people, guys were great and the lighting guys yeah, were great. I don't think people would think of great. a Ridley Scott massive blockbuster as an art movement. That's an interesting, uh, it's Man, it's, it's like, I, I felt there was days I felt like I was walking around in a painting. Wow. Like I'm in a time machine. Like this yeah. is amazing. And a time machine with people running around on fire. Honestly, immolating. Yeah. There was, I mean, you know, they, they were, there were actually, there's trained chickens in this movie, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, I want you to hang on right here, and uh, because I want to bring out a a, a cohort of yours, a, a long time uh, uh, co-founding member of Great Big C, uh, and he's getting a lot of attention for his solo project of late, his record. Let's bring out. Please welcome Sean McCann. <laughs> He loves the beard. He loves the beard. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I bought you something too. You brought. <laughs> I bought something that you should have in when you're in Newfoundland. It's uh, it's the daily dose we take here. It's 250,000 milligrams of vitamin D. <laughs> Thank you very much. Fantastic. It's a lot more practical than Alan's gift of the stir sticks. Pharmacy grade sunshine in there. I really appreciate that. You were, we thought you were looking oh. a bit peaked, you know? <laughs> As if you might have been Thank up late last night or something. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Uh, I was going to say something about all the, the white folks in this province, but uh, I'm just trying to fit in. Uh, <laughs> I, you, you, could, you, could go like, you could go with something like Gian Gomeshi Misan or something like that. Or, <laughs> Now, uh, first of all, Sean, I want to make sure we have enough time for you to play a, play a song for. I, I love the. Is it, where's your record? Here it is. It's a, a, a beautiful new record. Let me just first, before we get to your record, how does it feel to have your bandmate and longtime friend uh, appearing, uh, becoming a movie star now? I feel somewhat smaller. <laughs> Physically. Physically smaller. Yeah, I feel like I'm shrinking. No, it's it's great, and uh, you know I can't wait to see the movie. I don't. He hasn't told me if he survives the battle, so I don't know if he's injured in any way or anything like that. So I, I look forward to seeing, apparently he does a lot of fighting in this film. Yeah, right? yeah. The boys used to, Sean used to email me about every eight or 10 days when I was on the movie. Did you die yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, didn't die yet. Out of concern, clearly. Well, yeah. Yes, but you know. I, I thought you meant my character, but you actually probably meant. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm in the whole sword fighting thing and arrows and stuff. I mean, that's, that's my boyhood dream, man, it's great. Sean, in the meantime, you've, you've put out uh, a beautiful new solo. This is your first solo record, right? Yes. Uh, it's called Lullabies for Bloodshot Eyes. Tell, first of all, I mean, it's such a provocative title. Can you explain that to us? Where did that come from? Well, I used to have, I, I, I used to have bloodshot eyes for a very different reason than I do now. And uh, now I have bloodshot eyes because I have children. Uh, Keegan and Finn, Finnegan is two, Keegan is four. Keegan was up at 5.15 this morning. <laughs> and, uh, as you know, we were out a little late last night, so. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, in, I, a lot of the songs on the record kind of speak to uh, a big change in my life, which was, you know, getting married, having kids. And I, I cannot explain to you how much I underestimated the effect that that has on your life. And uh, 
It took me. <laughs> it took me a couple of years. And I think a lot maybe you can't explain that. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it's been you know it's been life altering and uh, in a in a in a really good way you know and uh, talk about making you feel small when you uh, I didn't realize how self absorbed I was until I had a family and. Uh, it, it really makes you feel a lot smaller when you have someone else to worry about. Everybody so. says that, you know, and that's why I don't want to have kids. I want to remain self-absorbed. Don't do it. Remain self -absorbed. Don't do it, man. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm here to warn you all. <laughs> uh, but it's, this is, a, it, it's sort of a, a, a testament and, a, and a, a tribute to, to, to your kids, right, this record. It is. It's bookended by two actual lullabies that I wrote for each of them, one each. And, uh, but in the middle, it's all about, like, uh, I guess what happens to your marriage and your your life, uh, the things that can change and can be really affected, and it's hard. Sean McCann, Alan Doyle, uh, Al uh, Robin Hood featuring Alan Doyle will open this year's Cannes Film Festival. It'll be, be out around the world in May, right? Yeah, May 14th. And, and Sean McCann's debut solo record is called Lullabies for Bloodshot Eyes. It's out now, and keep an eye out this July for the new Great Big C record. You at cbc.ca, Twitter, Gian Ganeshi. Back in a little bit. Stick around.